used to run them back roads fast as we could. One hindered road connected to neighborhoods. We spent hot summer days down at Race Cross and Landing. Jumping off a steel bridge, not knowing what you land in. Hey, what's going on everybody? Joint Service Outdoors here. On this episode, you're going to watch Rick chasing whitetails early September in Nebraska. I hope you enjoy the footage ahead. Stay tuned. I guess what I can do is I can run down there real quick. Go grab them. Come back up. I'm going to do that. September 15th, 2018. We're up on Doc's farm in a, uh, in a setup we haven't set this year. Uh, doesn't really have a name, we just call it the center stand. But you got a buddy set, there's a setup over here, and the pond's back over here to my left. Uh, the deer typically bed back in here behind us. Today's date, September 15th, 2018. A nice, cool fall morning. So uh, me and Blake actually last minute decided to sit this deer stand. Uh, talking over text messages the night before. Uh, looked at the HuntWise app and decided that uh, this stand would probably be best. We hadn't set this stand all year. I uh, had some good footage of some deer moving through there quite often. Uh, so we made the call decided to sit there. Boy, was that a good idea. Uh, didn't take very long before we had some action.
as you can see, we had a couple of young bucks come in on us this morning. Um, deer movement was phenomenal. This particular set that we were sitting had a couple camera pictures of a really good buck that we knew was frequent in the area. Um, it was just a matter of time before we knew we'd lay our eyes on them. Check this out. As you can see, uh, made a shot on the buck that we've been trying to get for quite some time. Um, we knew he was in there quite often, uh, so it, it worked out that we were sitting here this morning. So the part that you didn't see, because uh, it was pretty short from the time that we, we saw him, uh, me and Blake were just hanging out, talking, the little deer had already gone, uh, sitting there having a conversation. Uh, matter of fact, probably 15, 20 minutes before this, Blake hits the grunt call. You know, we were talking about it and we thought, you know, what is it going to hurt? Right? So he, he hits the grunt call and then 20 minutes go by, we're having a conversation and I look over his shoulder and, <laughs> and there he comes. You know, this particular spot, he could have gone three or four different directions. And uh, as fate would have it, he read the script that morning. He came right down the trail, right in front of us, you know, almost exactly 20 yards out of nowhere just showed up. So I make the shot and uh, we climb down the stand and uh, we had to go check the air.
up. He turned around this bush. So, just got the shot off on the buck, and um, Rick and I are both just shaking like we've seen a tree. We looked at the footage, kind of, we were a little bit iffy on whether or not the, sh the shot was actually good in terms of placement, but um, Rick's immediate reaction was, okay, I need to get out of the tree, I need to get out of the tree. <laughs> let's get down to the there. I want to check blood, I want to see where he went. I said, no, let's give him an hour, um, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, and see if maybe, hopefully, they'll expire close by. Uh, lo and behold, after we get down to check the arrow an hour later, um, they ended up leading us on a wild goose chase. Yeah, I mean, like he said, we get down, uh, I pick up the arrow, and immediately, uh, I, I felt good about it. I honestly did. I mean, the arrow is covered in blood, and there's just blood all over the ground. So I was like, man, this guy, he can't be too far. Uh, we actually watched him run out of the CRP into the woods, and uh, I just knew, you know, deep down that that deer was laying right there at the edge of the woods. You know, we had waited an hour. Um, we had watched the footage, like he said, several times. Uh, we played it back in slow motion, and we could tell, you know, like he said, it was a little forward, but it still looked in in the camera um, as if it if, if it hit vitals. So um, we get on this trail, we're walking, we make it probably 60 yards or so, and then just <laughs> the woods tear apart. The woods blew up on us. Deer blows, takes off running. So I am nauseous at this point. Because I just know, you know, that's that was him. That was him. He jumped up and, uh, you know, battle buddy over here. No, oh, maybe, maybe it was a doe. Maybe it was another doe. Well, I say that it was probably a doe <laughs> because the moment that we jumped that buck, there was actually three doe that bumped out right next to him. So yeah, he had actually were. gone to bed literally right next to a bunch of, there were a couple doe out there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we just was like, hey, you know, maybe that was just them. Uh, so we go in there, make it inside the woods. And, uh, yeah, well. Sure enough, it was him. You know, he had been bedded down. He didn't go five yards inside the woods before he oh. laid down. Um, so that was pretty comforting. Like, even though we'd waited that long and we jumped him, um, you know, probably the, the smart thing would, would have been at this point to, uh, you know, the saying goes, when in doubt, back out. And we probably should have. Uh, but, you know, again, looking at the bed that he was laid in, it was just covered in blood, blood clots. So we were like, hey, I mean, let's just give him some time. You know, maybe this is his last who rock. He's going to run a little bit. And uh, so we waited probably another 20, 30 minutes and then you know, got back on the blood again on the trail. Um, and once we picked up blood again, I mean, we knew exactly where he was going. He followed right down next to a, a, a honey hole stand of mine that I call the muddy stand. And um, at that point, we saw where he crossed the fence out, uh, fence out next to the cornfield. And we kind of knew, I was like, ah, well, I have an idea of where he's going. And he was headed straight south for that creek. So, okay. Like most deer, when they're shot, they head for water. So we get down there. We're thinking, okay, dear Lord, please let this buck be dead down in the creek. Well, that wasn't the case. Yeah, no. So the, this creek has 20-foot embankments on either side of it. And as we're walking down the edge, I, I keep telling him, like, man, I, I hope he's laying down the bottom. I hope he's laying in the bottom. Well, he wasn't. And uh, once I saw the blood going up the top of the other ridge, so he went down into the creek and out the other side of it. Um, mind you, these are not, you know, slow... No, they're probably Slowly. good 30, 30 degree embankments on yeah, both I mean, sides. So it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's almost straight up. It's pretty steep. And uh, so when I saw the blood trail going up, I was like, man, maybe this deer isn't as fatally wounded as we think he is. Uh, so we decided, let's get to the top of the ridge and uh, we'll check it out and just see. And uh, we make it to the top and bump him up again. There he goes again. He's off. You know, but the, the good thing about this situation, uh, if there's any at this point, um, in the process was he didn't go far. You know, a big mature deer like that, um, when you spook them, they're gone. They're leaving the country. And this guy only ran, what, maybe 20, 30 yards? Jumped, ran 20, 30 yards and stopped and started walking. Um, so I told Blake. So we like, knew he was hurt. Yeah, I'm like, hurt I mean, he, he's not doing well. Because um, if he was, he'd have been gone. But he wasn't. Uh, he, he just walked out of sight. So we waited again. Waited another 20, 30 minutes. Um, Again, at looking back at it now, hindsight being 2020, uh, might have been smart if we just backed out. 
we went back to the truck, gave him four or five hours. Um, well, I mean, you look at it that way, okay, since we didn't fatally wound the deer, um, at that point in time, we didn't really know. We had consistent blood, so we knew we had hit something pretty heavy. Now, whether or not he would have bled out by the time we got to him, that's hit or miss. Yeah, I mean, um, we weren't following, you know, little specks of blood. I no, mean, it was, no point did we look down spraying. trying to find uh, specks of blood. I mean, we were standing up looking two, three feet in front of us. And that's what kind of threw us for a loop. Was, you know, how can this deer be bleeding this bad and still be making it this far? Well, that just goes to show you how tough these Midwest deer are. Yeah, I mean, they, these things are, they're some tanks. And uh, so, long story short, this deer runs uh, in total distance, right probably about three miles. About three miles. Uh, we jumped him two more times in the process. Uh, thankfully, he looped back and started coming back. He actually crossed right over the blood trail um, that he went out on. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, that was confusing. Yeah. I'll tell you that. He circled. We actually lost blood for a while because he, he threw us off. He crossed back over uh, the blood trail. So, um, took us a little bit, but we ended up getting back on him. And uh, the very last time we jumped him, we saw him run. He went, looked as if he went back down in the embankment yep. uh, where that, that creek was. And uh, so, again, we, we waited, waited 20, 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, at this point, I'm just hoping and praying, maybe, you know, he's he down there in the bottom of that creek. And uh, Blake here is So the, the, <laughs> is the thing here, blood. okay, so like they say, when in doubt, back out. Well, another thing that helps is persistence pays off. Yeah. And, uh the only reason that we were able to pretty much get on this buck was literally by staying on him the entire time, keeping up with that blood trail, following him, giving him a couple 20, 30 minute breaks in between us, bumping him. And uh, it, the last stretch, he was headed straight back north, back to where we shot him. And uh, I'm looking down, following blood, <laughs> and Rick's right behind me. He goes, um, like, like, Blake, look. Right in front of me, there he was, probably seven yards, just laying there on the side of the, this creek embankment. Yeah. And this deer is not dead, mind you. He's laying there. Looking right at me. Looking right at Blake. And, uh, you know, again, as fate would have it, I, you know, Blake was able to step out of the way. I think all three of us were probably shocked at this point. Me and Blake we were, were obviously all dog tired. Let's obviously tired. Uh, we were obviously shocked that the deer just laid there. He didn't jump up. Uh, he laid there, and he literally was looking at us. We run him out of blood. Yeah. That's what we did. And uh, so Blake was able to step out of the way, and I was able to, to close the chapter on Mr. Y guy. Uh, got a shot in the front of him, and he expired right there. Uh, you know, the, the unfortunate thing about all of this is... Was the fact yeah. that we had to chase him for as long as we did, and the fact that that deer suffered as long as he did. Yeah, you know, I, I hate that. And uh, again, you know, like I said, hindsight being twenty twenty, you know, it's almost 50-50. Like, have we backed out? Um, would he, would he still would be he have would he have expired in four hours, uh, or would he still been alive? Um, you know, persistence pays off. You know, it's a good thing we stayed after him. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, we put in a lot of work that day. <laughs> yes, we did. A lot of miles and uh, a little uh, painful excursion on Rick's end. Yeah, so uh, we find him. Obviously, like I said, you know, I, I put the the, f the fatal shot on him, and he, he expired right there. And uh, so as we're heading back to the truck told Blake, I was like, man, you know, we did all this tracking, you know, let me do what I can to drag him back. Well, again, like I told you earlier, these banks are like this. So another lesson learned this day. Um, when your buddy tells you to push the deer down the bank first before you go, yeah, listen. Yeah, do so. So we saw a trail that was kind of sloped down the edge of the bank, and it was good because just to the side of that it was about 10 foot straight off. Into um, a nice muddy hole. Nice muddy Swampy hole. Swampy hole. So um, instead of leading with a deer and letting him go down the hill and me walking down. Gravity take effect. Yeah, I decided that I was, I was going to drag him down. And uh, so I do. And he, his body weight slips. Well, he knocks my feet out from up under me. So as you can picture at this point, me and the deer in tow. Tumbling. Uh, go straight down probably, what, 8 to 10 foot? About a ten foot straight. I mean, I'm talking. It was it was just a straight just, drop. It was a dished out hole from where the rain had done. Yeah. So I it all out. I went straight down, and uh, just bang, right at the bottom of it. Deer comes down with me. Uh, honestly, I don't know how he didn't land on top of me. Um, Managed to land about three foot to the left of me. Yeah. So I, when I land, like he said, you know, I instantly heard pop. So uh, my adrenaline's pumping. You know, I'm, I'm going 90 miles an hour, so immediately I try to jump back up, and Blake's like, hey, calm down, man. 
uh, from my perspective, that didn't look well. Um, no, it yeah. didn't. It looked like, I mean, yeah. They went straight down, landed in the mud, and I'm talking, it was just an immediate stick. There was no give left, give right, give back, give front. Um, stick, pop, and it was a couple few choice words out of Rick's mouth. <laughs> and then I said, okay, well, hey, let's, I'll get the deer out of the hole. Yeah. You just figure yourself out real quick. Yeah, so sure that you didn't break nothing. I, at this point, am thinking, oh, you know, I just, I just banged it over. It was just a stinger. It'll go away. Uh, so... Me being a hard-headed individual, I, I'm thinking, I'm, whatever, I, I can help you. So he gets him down, and we start dragging him. Well, there was no, no load being put on this this right ankle over here. Uh, every time I did it, that was a pretty painful experience. So, uh, long story short, we'll close the loop on this thing. Um, great hunt, great hunt, great morning. Yep. Um, had a lot of deer action. Uh, we were able to, like I said, close the chapter on white guy. And uh, very early on in the season. Yep. Yeah. Very, very early. I mean, we were two weeks into deer season, and uh, I was able to tag out uh, on my archery tag. So um, get him back, and he currently, right now, is at the taxidermy. So um, the unfortunate thing about all of this, and the reason we're having to talk you through this last piece, is uh, so somewhere in the process of this three-hour long blood trail, camera battery uh, died. Battery died. And uh, so the next couple of things you're going to see here are some pictures of um, Rick holding his buck and attempting to drag him down. Yeah, me holding the deer. And um, all of this was obviously before the ankle piece. But um, hey, I'm alive. You know, I'm healthy. The deer uh, was recovered. We didn't lose a deer that We morning. found him, uh, which worked out. He didn't suffer, you know, for too long anyways. Uh, ankle's doing better and uh, still hunting. So... Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate all of your support. Uh, you know, please like, share uh, as much as you possibly can. Follow us on Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. We also have a YouTube page out there. Um, yeah. Just to kind of give you a heads up on what's to come. Um, I've got two bucks on camera right now that I am in hoping, hoping to come to cahoots with. Um, everything's still pretty shy from what we can tell on camera, but maybe we now that wide guy is gone, Maybe some other, one of these other mature bucks will come in and take rain over the area of docks that we hunt. And uh, let's just hope that I can get one. So y'all stay yeah. tuned and we appreciate your support and service and thanks for everything. Thank you.